Hey! Hello everyone and welcome back to the walkthrough. Guess what we're gonna do one more time here. We're gonna slow the flow of time first. And then we're gonna go and get that piece of paper again. You know, the land title deed. Why are we why we're doing this again? You, you're probably asking, well... Well, lots of Majora's Mask in a nutshell. A lot of repetition on stuff. And now remember, since we know the code ahead of time... Guess what we can do? We can skip the kid catching side quest and we can go straight over to the observatory. Heck yeah, so let's just cut on ahead. Yay for repetition, yay. Repetition is fun, isn't it? So, so much fun. So much fun, I'm just getting out of the way early on so you don't have to worry about this sort of thing. <laughs> so yeah, I don't just... Well, I guess in the game's defense, having that code does speed up things in terms of getting the moon tier. But it's just a thing though that it's kind of, kind of well out of the way. <laughs> so okay, I got the land title deed. Now what the heck am I going to use it for this time? Well, there's something else and it's not in town this time. In fact, it'll be around the area that we're going to next. But I, I just need to get this ahead of time for the sake of getting a heart piece and whatnot, so yeah. If you don't mind, I'm gonna also do a short side quest. Remember that swordsman school back up over here at uh, West Clock Town? Well, you might have guessed that now that we've got a sword, well, we can now do stuff. See, so you, you check that. I mean, oh, that's the wrong place. That is definitely the wrong place. Uh, I want to... There we go, the Mighty Training Center. That's the way the pl I mean, that's the name of the place. That post office thing is for another time. But alright. This training center is friendly, polite, 24 hour one on one training that will noticeably improve your sword skills. From now until the end of the carnival, join us at a special discount. Will I try it? Ah, yes, and I will do it on the expert course of 10 rupees. I got those from a couple pots at the observatory, so didn't that work out nicely? The expert course is a practice session. Cut down the 10 logs using highly difficult techniques. If you score a perfect 30 points, you shall be taught all the secrets I have prepared. So what we gotta do here is just jump slash them. Just target them, and then press the, press the attack button. That's all you gotta do. And you gotta do that for all the logs that pop up for maximum score. This is not hard to do in the slightest. Just get back, just get yourself back in the center so that you can see where all the logs are coming from, plan your path, and then get to slashing. Eventually, you will finish this side quest and get yourself an almighty heart piece. Two more will do. And voila, and oh shoot, oh shoot, there we go. <laughs> Somehow managed to miss. Hmm, impressive. I must give you something here. So yeah, the jump attack is apparently considered the, the best technique and whatnot of the sword. I guess it is one of the most powerful sword moves, but sometimes it's kind of impractical. So <laughs> Same if he's expecting to teach the ways of the warrior. Um, yeah, I, I don't I don't really think he's teaching all the techniques. <laughs> I forgot what the novice course is, actually. Uh, I think it's just teaching you the moves of the sword, if I'm not mistaken. Hold on, I'm gonna go... Actually, I can get a, get myself a rupee up here, but... <laughs> I was gonna say, hold on, I'll go cut some grass to get a rupee, but... Eh, you know what? You know what? Oh, shoot, I didn't mean to deposit! Dang it! I, I was better off cutting grass! This is gonna take me forever! Okay, there we go. He, he just said that I didn't have any rupees, so, yeah. I'm just going... I'm just gonna take out one rupee just to... Just to remind myself what this course was. What? What's this? It's a waste to take out such a tiny bit. But if you say so. But it's not really a waste because I'm making the most of my rupees. And then I'm gonna go back over to East Clock Town and once again grab that treasure chest that has 100 rupees from it. But okay. Novice course. Okay, let's see what this is now. 
I just I just completely forgot what this thing is. Well, you draw your sword, so she's your basics of minor combat. Sideways jumps after pressing L to lock on it a lot. While targeting, press A to push while well, pushing left and right. So you're basically jumping left and right. So yeah, this is like your tutorial on sword play and whatnot. So he so he is actually teaching you stuff here now. But if you if you chose the other course first, he wouldn't have done that. <laughs> I guess in in his defense, he did call it the novice course, which in theory means that y you know you would choose that one first. But yeah. <laughs> All right, the horizontal cut. Simply press B. I'm, don't lock on when you're doing that. Otherwise, you'll do this vertical cut here. See how? See that? It changes it? Yeah. And that sword is really sharp, by the way. So, to do the thrust, you gotta press forward and then press B. Voila! And jump attack. And see, he didn't mention yet that he considers a jump attack the ultimate technique. But, yeah, that is what you need to do to get the perfect score. And yeah, I already showed you how to defend yourself with the shield. Okay, there you go. So now you've seen the, the novice course, even though I really honestly didn't have to show you that at all, because I would teach you the basics of sword play as we go, but eh, I suppose it was worth the rupee for the dialogue. <laughs> Alright, so I'm gonna go back over to the other portion of Clock Town and go and get that 100 rupees, because what I'd like to do is deposit all of those rupees at the bank to get put me up over 200, and then I'll be able to get a wallet upgrade. At least I think it was after 200, or did he say it was 400? I kind of forgot, actually. Well, we'll see, I guess, because uh, I've, I've, I'm going to be doing this probably every time I reset the clock, because it's just going to be faster for the sake of rupee grinding, because I think after you put in, like, 4,000 rupees in the bank, you get a heart piece, so it's mandatory to keep putting stuff in the bank. And it's very, very grindy if you don't keep putting stuff in the bank like that. Because you're, you're trying to do this, you know, as, as efficiently as possible, I guess you could say. And yeah, I, I don't think you want to do this all at once. You know, keep resetting time, getting the 100 rupees, going back to the bank, etc, etc. I think you want to do this gradually rather than getting that heart piece on as early on as possible. Because it's just so, so repetitive and grindy and annoying, it's, yeah, let's just not even go down that route. And only do that if we have to, even if we get this heart piece way at the end of the game. So, yeah. <laughs> Here we go, let's deposit all 99 of our rupees. There you go, it's a lot, yes, it's a lot! All right, 234. What's this? You've already saved. Yeah, so it was 200 rupees. A well, little guy who's your special gift. Take it. We've got a wallet upgrade. Yeah, and that's quite a bit more convenient than losing out on rupees that you could be giving to this guy for that heart piece later on. All right. I think I I I I'm done side questing for now. I'm a little bit tuckered out of Clock Town, so let's finally go out that southern exit and make our way to the swamp. It's not a very long path or anything like that, but we'll actually be able to see something new. <laughs> so I, I just wanted to knock off a bunch of the the more tedious stuff early on so we can kind of space it out and yeah, just to, just to make things smoother in the future. So we're going towards Woodfall, which is straight ahead. There's a heart piece in a tree along the way there that I can't get. But then there's another piece after that in a tree that I can get if I'm really lucky with my bubbles. Uh, at least at this point in the game. Otherwise, wait until you get the bow. <laughs> so what I'm just going to be doing here is... Wait, actually, hold on a sec. Oh, okay, yeah, this is gonna trigger a little cutscene of sorts, that's right. Oh, so you can see this this on the tree here. Mm -hmm. See the two fairies up above Skull Kid there? Oh, I remember this. Tail and I drew this with the Skull Kid when we first met him. He told us that he had been fighting with his friends and that they had let him left them all alone. It's a dark and stormy night. Actually, it's, 
Maybe it's more like dusk rather than night, because it's still rather bright out, actually. But anyway, anyway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're going to hide from the rain, basically, until it passes. And there they go. And then you get a shiver. I don't know if they're cold or if it's because... They seen the Skull Kid. Yeah, I guess he's chilly too. Or he, he's seen a ghost himself. Or, or a Skull Kid himself. I don't know. Maybe he looked in the mirror. And they all warmed up together. It's all a warm, happy, loving time. And then... Well... They had a party! Yeah! And that's how they met and became friends. Oh, geez. That grass is really thick. And then he carved it into the tree to sort of mark this day in like a cave painting. Certain maybe, maybe it's not a carving. Maybe it's just a painting because there's a black dot. And yeah, so I'm thinking it's more of a painting. But I'm sure it was because he was always playing tricks. Nobody wanted to play with him. But to do what he did just because of that... Yeah, um, it looks like he knocked out the Happy Mask Salesman, just like he knocked me out early on in the game, and he, this is how the mask was stolen from the Happy Mask Salesman, and once he got his power, I mean, and once he got his power, yeah, that's that's a better voice for this, this situation, yeah, yeah, so that's how it happened, alright, down the woodfall, here we go, and the other heart piece, is uh, up in one of these really dead looking trees, but we'll get into that as we. Hey, hey, you. Aha! I don't think I even touched you with my sword and it still worked. <laughs> if you don't mind, I'm just gonna kinda chop through stuff here because why not? Just kinda maybe get, perhaps maybe get some bomb drops, who knows? Oh shoot, oh shoot, oh shoot! This is a bad bat and they're, they're kinda like the keys. Of, yeah, they aren't that difficult, but the thing about it is that there's a couple of bad bats hanging out in a really awkward spot that I need to get up for a harpies. See this up here? Uh, yeah, there's there's one right there. There's, see it at the very... Oh, jeez, here comes one. <laughs> I just caught a glance, caught a glimpse of that. Alright, now hopefully I'll be able to get lucky and shoot this sucker with a... You, you, everyone... You out of the way. All right. So if I'm if I'm lucky, I can shoot. As I said, that bats in this tree. Maybe I'll get lucky. As I said, the bubbles are horrifically inaccurate, so this might not even work. All right, I got lucky. If if you don't want to bother with that, you can just come back later or get some more magic from the green choo choos. The red choo choos are the ones that have hearts. Yeah. Anyway. Grab that. Voila! Piece of hearts. Yeah! I believe they made this... Uh, I could be wrong, though, but I think they made that tree higher with a further away bat so that you wouldn't be able to get that early on like that, like what I did here. But it is possible to do it in this game, though, so I thought I would do it. Here's another hole in the ground that I'll just explore just because. Uh, here's a Deku... Well, I should see a mini Baba. Yeah, um, what they do is that these little ones, they always give you Deku nuts when you kill them. Yep, just like that. And there's bugs down here if you want to keep that in mind as well for the future. And these, this is a different version of the Deku Baba. Yeah, it is a Deku Baba, uh, but you want to do a horizontal cut this time. So don't, don't target it. Just let that stick fall. When you cut them from the stalk, you'll get a Deku stick. If you kill them some other way, you'll... You either get a nut or nothing. So, Deku sticks are there to just do some sorts of puzzles and stuff like that for the most part. They are pretty powerful to use as a weapon, but when you use them as a weapon, they'll break. So yeah, um, this is kind of like a place to grind for them because they'll just keep coming back over and over and over again. So I'm just going to grab a couple of sticks on the go here, along with these uh, red rupees. So, oops, I got a little too close. He, he moves forward when you do the sword slash. That's okay, though. Alright, so I got four. I believe you can carry a maximum of ten at this point, but I'm not going to grind until I get to ten on camera. And there's Tingle uh, hanging around over here as well. 
Uh, this place right here is not the place you want to go next, but I will show you this just for the future. It's the swamp shooting. Wait, actually, no, you know what? I'll, I'll save that when I actually go down that path later. Just for the sake of showing you something new when we get down that pathway in the future. By the way, um, you can use the power of the Deku Mask and then uh, bomb stuff from the heavens thusly. Uh, well, if there's something nearby. Yeah, see that? Well, I wasn't I wasn't even close enough to be able to pull it off, but yeah. <laughs> I just thought, eh, I'll show you the power of the Deku Nuts now that I don't have to save them for the kids that are running around Clock Town. Alright, now we're at a new portion. The Southern Swamp. And... and... It's, it's pretty glum, chum. There's a frog all the way at the very end of the left path if you keep going down that way. Remember those frog? I mean, well, at least the other frog that was back at the, the laundry pool in Clock Town? Well, that's another one of the frogs for the quest. We still can't do that quest because we don't have access to all the frogs. So, yeah. Also, over here, in the 3DS version, there is... You'll be taught the Song of Soaring, but that's not in this version. It's just in the uh, 3DS version, but instead, we get ourselves another owl save! Yes! 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 Ah! Uh, thank Arceus. Yes, I will. And with that, I'm gonna end off the part here. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next part. Oh boy, well actually, you know what, I, I should actually show you the, the procedure, I guess you could say, of uh, copying over a save file. Like, what I would do now is, see, if, if I were to hit the copy, there's, it says there's no empty file, so I can't actually copy it over. What I have to do is I would have to erase the other one, which happens to be file 2. It look, they look identical, but if you if you were to go on them, see, three hearts four hearts. So this is this is my more later save file. So what I'd have to do is erase this and then copy file one over to file two before I can do the copy. But still, I have a way to sorta of, kinda hard save with the power of the owl statues and I'm not gonna copy over the save file until I'm sure that my recordings didn't glitch or anything like that. So with that I'm ending off the part here. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you in the next parts.